فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى We took in our previous lesson what it meant by قوله تعالى the statement of Allah Alhamdulillahi We mentioned that the alif al-lam in alhamdu is istighraq istighraqiyah and we mentioned that the lam in lillahi we said it's lam milkiyah and we're now going to move on to rabbil alameen the word rabb we already spoke about it and we took what it meant so we're now left to explain inshallah ta'ala what it means al-alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement al-alameen is the plural of the word alam, universe. And the alam, the definition of it is that it's a ismun li ajnasi ma yu'lam or it is ismun li ajnasi al mukhtalifati It is a term that's used for different types of things. For example, you will say عالم الإنسان عالم الطير عالم النبات عالم الملائكة عالم الجن عالم السماوات عالم الأراضين عالم الماء إلى آخره and That would mean human world, for instance. And you would say the world, the, the world of the birds, مثلا or um, the angels, the, or you would say the world of the jinns, or the, and the list goes on. And the plural of it is alamin, and it is everything, as the Sheikh says, wa kullu ma siwa Allah. The word alam is everything besides Allah Tabarak wa Taala. As the author says, وَكُلُّ مَنْ سِوَى اللَّهِ Everything that is besides Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is what? عَالَمٌ It's a universe. وَأَنَا وَاحِدٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمِ And I am, and I am one of those. As the author says, وَأَنَا وَاحِدٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمِ And I am one of those creation of Allah that is living in the universe. Then the author, Rahimahullah, he said, Rahmatan wasi'ah, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ if it said to you, بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ If somebody asks you and says to you, how do you recognize Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ How do you recognize your Lord, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? Because what we know is The rububiyyah requires knowledge and understanding and comprehension. And that knowledge you can find it in the Quran. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says to us and these verses that I'm going to give you are going to instruct you in how to recognize Allah, how to know Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Yunus, Ayah 101, قُلُ انظُرُوا مَاذَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah says, 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, قُلُ انْظُرُوا مَاذَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Look what is in the samawat and what is on this earth. Look, observe. وَقَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى Allah also says, in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 185, أَوَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا فِي مَلَكُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Have they not looked at فِي مَلَكُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ This universe, this earth The heavens or the earth Have they not looked وَمَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And that which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has created Have they not looked at it? So if you look at the Quran, you find in it a da'watu ila nadari fil malakuti. It's calling you to look at the universe, to observe. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah here he says, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ if it is said to you, بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ How do you recognize your Lord? He said, فَقُلْ Respond. And say to that individual that's asking you, بآياته ومخلوقاته. I recognize Allah تبارك وتعالى with His ayat, which are His signs, ومخلوقاته and that are His creations. So I recognize Allah تبارك وتعالى with His ayat, which are His signs, ومخلوقاته and His creations. So now the author is going to tell us what are he, what what are Allah Tabarak wa Taala signs, and what are His creation, Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa min ayati from His signs, because this min is tabriya. From some of the signs of Allah is, al laylu, wal naharu, wal shamsu, wal qamaru. Day, night, sun and the moon. So it's night, day, sun, and the moon. وَمِن مَخْلُوقَاتِهِ And from the creations of Allah is السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعَ Seven heavens وَالْأَرَضُونَ And also the earth السَّبْعَ وَمَنْ فِيهِنَّ And that which is in it وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And that which is between it. Now the author here, what he did was, he told us two things in which we can recognize Allah with. The first one he mentions is بِآيَاتِهِ And the second thing that he mentions was وَمَخْلُوقَاتِهِ The creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question that one can, would ask himself is that, And the author, inshallah ta'ala, is going to bring evidence for that anyways. That the day and the night, the sun and the moon, are from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala signs. Min ayatihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in Surah Fussilat, ayah 37, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ From the, the signs of Allah is the day, the night, the sun and the moon. But what what we also know is, but what we also know is, from the signs of Allah is the samawat and the aradun, the earth, are also from the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And Imam Abu Atahiyah, rahimahullah, Abu Atahiyah, whose name is Ismail ibn al-Qasim al-Anzi, who's from the Qabila al-Anza, bilwala, of course, very well known as Abu Atahiyah. Abu Atahiyah. He's very well known. He was a lot of poetry in Zuhd. He talks, he talks about aestheticism. He also talks about wisdom. His poetries are very powerful and they're very strong, mashallah. You will benefit a lot from them. He says, pay attention to this. He says, وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَةٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ Everything has a sign in it. That shows you that Allah is one. That Allah is one. You can find this is you can find this poetry in his Diwan, Diwan Abu Al Atahiyah, page forty-five. 
So what I'm trying to say here is that, pay attention here, is that the day and the night, the sun and the moon, pay attention, those four, the author, what did he say they fall under? The signs of Allah. They fall under? Signs of Allah. And what is it that he put under the creation of Allah? The Samawat and the Aradun. Why is it that he distinguished it between it like that? When in reality, if you look at the Quran and the Sunnah, you would actually find that the sun and the moon, the day and the night, as much as, it's, as, much as it is a uh, sign from Allah, so is the Samawat and also so is the Aradun. So the question is, فَلِمَا farraqa. Why did he divide it, the Shaykh? And why did he give this one makhluqat and this one ayat? Question. Now we're going to realize the people of knowledge, the gifts that Allah gives them subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they think and how they use their words and how they observe things. The Shaykh rahimahullah, he chose it for a, a very, very, very uh, specific reason is why he chose it. Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah. Ayat, first of all, is the plural. Is plural of what? Ayah. So what does ayah mean? هي البينة الواضحة الدالة على المراد. An ayah is whatever clarifies. Clearly, it clarifies it. The intent. As Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah Al-Shu'ara, ayah. Eight, in the Fidalika la ayatun wa ma kana aksaruhum mu'minin. Surah Al Hijr, Allah says, ayah 75, in the Fidalika la ayatin lil mutawasitin. So this means dalalatun bayinatun wadihatun ala al murad. Both of those were verses. The reason why the author did was is before that he said, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ if it said to you, Oh, you individual. فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ if it said to you. Okay. And you are asked. بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ How do you recognize your Lord? How do you re realize Him? The night and the day and the sun and the moon are signs that are clear proof signs for the human being. And the reason why they are clear cut signs is because they go and they come back. What do they do? They actually go and they do come back. And when something goes and it comes back, it has more of a proof than when something is always there. Daytime, when you're there, you see the earth. Nighttime, you can see the earth. So it doesn't really go. And that's why Nabiullah Ibrahim, when he was trying to prove to his people Allah's existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah wa ta'ala creating everything, and him being the sustainer and the provider, and him being the one who deserves to be worshipped, he didn't use the earth and the samawat as a proof. What is it that he uses as a proof? Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 75, to Ayah 76, وَكَذَلِكَ نُورِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلْيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَأَى كَوْكَبًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ So here we see Nabi Allah Ibrahim alayhi salam. He used something that moves, something that has haraka. Does that make sense? Something that doesn't stay, stay, stay still, something that goes. Because he wants to use this movement as to mean that there's somebody who's controlling all of this and he's running it. Look what he said. When he saw the moon come out, he used that as his proof. When he saw the sun out, he then used that as his argument. The reason is for him using that is because they change and they go. As for the sabawat and the ard, 
It's an ayah, but not to the person who you're trying to use it for an argument for them. Are you there? The ayah in it is not clear cut. And that's what the ayahs, the, the, the definition we gave for an ayah was what? Right? That the ayah is something that shows clear cut. Clearly shows you the intent that you're trying to get to. Or what you're trying to prove. صح? But the person who's looking, you're using something that's going to be always there. Okay? It doesn't show for him دَلَالَةٌ ظَاهِرَةٌ وَاضِحَةٌ عَلَى الْمُرَادِ It does too like in a person who's already in agreement with you. Once you've already convinced the person, then it becomes an ayah and a dalil for him. Or a person who, of course, Allah wa Taala has given them fahm, understanding. ذَوِلْ الْبَابِ people, people of intellect. People of high intellect. For them, this is an ayah. As Allah says it in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as I said to you, inshallah ta'ala, the reason why the author did that is because the shams and the qamar, the day and the night, they are mutagayyarat, they change. Tuqbil wa It comes and it goes. So these are ayat and these are dilalat ala rububiya. And how can you say that, by the way, how can you prove that those things are signs? Because you'll say to the person, Who's controlling this now? That's the, you're using that movement and that going and coming back as a, as a evidence, right? You're going to say, okay, okay, I'm asking you a question. It was daytime before and now it's the nighttime. Who's controlling that? Who's running it? How is it happening? We never miss a day. So who's coming? So who's going? Who's controlling? Who's making all of this happen? So your argument, your evidence is actually in the haraka, the movement that's taking place. So here. Whereas the earth and the samawat, they are still and they're firm. And the person keeps looking at it, it doesn't change. So the evidence that you're trying to extract from it, it becomes harder than it would be when it comes to the ashamsu wal qamar wal layl wal naharu. So I hope that makes it clear for you why the author, rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'ah, farraqa bayna al ayat wal makhluqat. Why he divided between the ayat and the makhluqat. رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. May Allah bestow his never ending mercy on Shaykh al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمة واسعة. Then the Shaykh رحمه الله he brings evidence for what he said. He says رحمه الله he brings قوله تعالى the statement of Allah تبارك وتعالى he says what دليله قوله تعالى the evidence for this the proof for this is what قوله تعالى the statement of Allah and this we will find it in سورة الفصورة فصلة آية 37 Allah says ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر so let's stand over the verse and explain it inshallah تعالى ومن آياته from the signs of Allah so when you say وَمِنْ آيَاتِ Remember you just took what the mi- ayat is plural and the singular is what? Ayah, right? And you know the definition of ayah. What does it mean? دَلَالَةَ وَاضِحَةَ ظَاهِرَ بَيِّنَ جَلِيَّةَ عَلَى الْمُرَادِ There is something that's clear-cut, evidence, proof for whatever meaning you're trying to portray, whatever meaning you're trying to get across. وَمِنْ آيَاتِ From the signs of Allah is what? اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ Night وَالنَّهَارُ Daytime وَالشَّمْسُ The sun وَالْقَمَرُ The moon They are all what? They are all signs of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala If a person goes out and he observes 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 فَإِنَّ الْمُتَأَمِّلَ إِذَا تَأَمَّلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ If the individual goes and he observes and he looks at the day and then he looks at the night and he realizes that the day enters into the night and creeps in and the night fades away or the opposite t- takes place. And he sees that when, the, when it's daytime and night's coming in, the way that the night creeps in and the day is going. And when the, the opposite, how it takes place. And that sometimes the night is longer and the day is shorter. And sometimes the, sh- the, the day is short, uh, longer and the night is sh- When he looks at that, then all of this is what? 
all of this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls. And that it has, all of these things have a maf'oolun biha. Somebody who's doing this, who's running all of this. But then, you, then he asks himself, who is the one who's doing all of this and running all of this? And this, to be honest, question is, is very easy. This question is something that every single person should be asking themselves. And the answer, without a doubt, is, is simple. The answer to that question is very simple and it's not hard. And that is, the answer is easy for everybody who has eyes and Allah wa Taala has given them a qalb. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورَهُ And that is why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he says as the Shaykh brought the ayah min ayatihi al-laylu wa nahar wa al-shams wa al-qamar la tasjudu do not prostrate lil-shamsi do not prostrate to the sun wala lil-qamar and do not prostrate to the moon wasjudu lillah prostrate to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala these are creations. They are only signs that Allah has created, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't prostrate to them. Do not what? Don't prostrate to them. لا تسجدوا للشمس Do not prostrate to the shams. And do not prostrate to the qamar, the moon. وَسْجُدُوا Prostrate and worship لله The Lord the which one? الذي خلقهن The one who created it. إن كنتم If you are إياه تعبدون To specifically worship him alone and not to associate partners with him. If you're fascinated with the sun, if you're fascinated with the moon, if you're fascinated with the creation, subhanAllah, don't worship them. Worship who? Allah. And it's funny and it's actually amazing. SubhanAllah, there was a time in my life when I read this ayah, I, was, I used to think, subhanAllah, you know, the application of this verse, I'll think, subhanAllah, now, who would want to worship the sun and the moon? Huh? But if you look at the atheists today, they actually worship the universe. That is their creator. Mm. That is what they worship. That's what they say that is the creator, the ultimate creator, big man. It's, it's the universe they're worshipping. So we say to them and we remind them of Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرِ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Worship him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh Rahimahullah brought another ayah وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And the statement of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهِ Your Lord is Allah الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّبَاوَاتِ The one who created the sabawat في ستة أيام he created them in six days ثم استوى على العرش and then Allah went above the throne يغشي الليل النهار يطلبه حثيثا ما معنى يغشي الليل النهار Allah make he, the word يغشي means that Allah makes a veil over the day with the night the night covers it up okay Allah says that سبحانه وتعالى very good. And the way it comes and it takes over it over it is يطلبه, as Allah tells us حثيثاً, bit by bit. Sometimes the, the night takes over the moon and sometimes uh, sorry the, sometimes the, the day takes over the night and sometimes the night takes over the moon. But it takes it's not that you're sitting and then boom it's just pitch black dark it's night time. And nor does it just one time turn into a date it happens gradually bit by bit it gets dark bit by bit Allah does it subhanahu wa ta'ala like that he is the one who does that <coughs> this is the ayah that the shaykh rahimahullah he brought now, these two evidences that he brought is actually proving بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ How have you recognized your Lord? 
بآياته he signs ومخلوقاته the first ayah that he brought was what ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون that ayah clearly mentions it ought to be what ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر ومن آياته آية and this one says what إن ربكم الله الذي خلق مخلوقات when Allah was talking about what? As-Samawat wal-Ard. Allah referred to it as what? Khalaq as-Samawat wal-Ard. So he's trying to prove here that this, the first part, the first ones were used as ayat and the next one were used as makhluqat, which is the Samawat and ma'ard. So this again strengthens the usage of the Shaykh rahimahullah. And wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, this Imam, Shaykh al-Islam, Hamna Abdul Wahab, he didn't just make sure that he provides us with evidences in every point that he mentions, but rather he observes the wordings. And this is a sign, a characteristics of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the people of the Sunnah. And even when they talk, or even when they speak, their wordings that they use are verses from the Qur'an. When they speak, they use a hadith and statements of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, and it enters into their speech. They do iqtibas. They actually take from the ahadiths and they take from the ayat and they provide, they apply it in their speeches. Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. And the reason why that happens is because they lived by the Qur'an. And when a person lives by something, he starts to imitate it, he starts to copy it, he starts to speak like it, starts to act like it. Naab. So that's why. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he brings those two verses and he uses the wordings that are used in those verses. So the way we recognize Allah is by his signs. It's by the signs that are around us. The person observes, the person looks. These are things that what? Anam. Allah wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al Fusilat, Ayah 9 to Ayah 12. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادًا ذَلِكَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَبَارَكَ فِيهَا وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَقْوَاتَهَا فِي أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامٍ سَوَاءً لِلسَّائِلِينَ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ ائْتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهًا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ فَقَضَاهُنَّ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وأوحى في كل سماء أمرها وزينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وحفظا ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم. So all of this, Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, He tells us what? How is it? قل أئنكم لا تكفرون Do you disbelieve بالذي خلق الأرض the one who created this earth? earth. في يومين He created in how many? How long? Two days. وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادًا And you make idols with him. You worship things besides him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah wa ta'ala is telling us in this verse that he created the what? The heavens and the earth. He created it. But pay attention. This verse should not come across to you that Oh, I thought Allah created it in six days. And this verse says فِي يَوْمَيْنِ Two days. How do you reconcile it? Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala created the earth four days and he created the Samawat two days. Are you with me? The first of it was on a, on a Sunday and the last was on a Friday. Based on the hadith Imam Abu Huraira the companion Abu Huraira narrated you can find this hadith in Sahih Muslim and Nasa'i in his Kubra, Ahmed in his Musnad. Some scholars, they criticized it and they, they weakened it. They, they, meant, they mentioned the illa for it. From the scholars that critique this narration is Ali ibn al-Madini, al-Imam al-Bukhari. And other than them, min al-Hufab. And they actually said that this is not marfu'an. It's not the statement of the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Rather, it is the statement of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhu. And he took it from Ka'ab al-Ahbar, as they say. Others, it confused them, this narration. 
So sometimes they make it marfu' uh, Sometimes they don't Naam. Which is a narration Which inshallah ta'ala you guys can look it up yourselves It's in Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih muslim Hadith 2789 So four days Allah tabarak wa ta'ala He created lil-ardi And yawmani lil-sama Based on this verse Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He says in that verse قُلْ أَيْنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادَ ذَلِكَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا Another statement says وَقَدَّرَ فِي In that same ayat to come وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَقْوَاتَ فِي أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامٍ Seven, four days Four days That's the earth And the sama is of two days The question that arises is that the scholars have asked one another is, is that are these days like the days that we know or is it different? Um, and what is zahir from the Quran? What is apparent from the Quran is that Allah left it unrestricted and Allah is speaking to us something we know and something we understand. He's not speaking to us about something we don't understand. So what we say is that it is the days which we know. And the scholars, they said the reason why Allah wa Ta'ala, He chose subhanahu wa ta'ala to create this universe in six days. He chose subhanahu wa ta'ala is connecting al-musabbabat bi asbabiha. Allah is trying to connect the means huh, with the uh, the sabab with the musabbabat. The cause and the thing that's causing it. Connect it subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, Allah doesn't he wants to teach us. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he chose to make everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with a cause that needs to be put in place. He could have just said, be and it would be, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lahra, seconds would be even, be and it would be. But if Allah wa ta'ala did that, you as a slave need to know that nothing is just going to happen. You need to work. You need to put your effort in, your hard work. Ma'am? And work towards it. So inna rabbakum Allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal ardh fi sittati ayyam that's where the six days in which Allah created it subhanahu wa ta'ala thumma istawa ala al-arsh and then Allah went above the throne subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say thumma istawa it means ala wartafa means Allah went above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he went above his throne and the way Allah wa Taala went above His throne is in a way that befits His Majesty, Subhanahu wa Taala. The evidences that prove that Allah is above His creation and that He's above His throne, أكثر من أن تحصر. It is too much for anybody to put a figure to it. It's too much. وقد أجمع المسلمون على ذلك. The Muslims have have agreed upon. And are in unanimous agreement regarding Allah being above His throne, Subhanahu wa Taala. We mentioned what it means. Yushi layla, nahara yatrubuhu hafitha. We mentioned what it is. Then the Sheikh, rahimahullah, the. Then the Sheikh, rahimahullah. In your copy, does the Sheikh finish the verse? Does you have the better? You, get, you have a better? No. So let's carry on the verse to finish off the verse. Then يطلب حثيثا والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر والشمس the sun والقمر and the moon والنجوم and the stars مسخرات بأمره they are all made mudallalatin jariyatin fi majariha bitaskhiri Allah ta'ala. Allah made it easy. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made them flow and work in our favor. He's the one who did it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us. 
Are you with me? Musakharatun bi amri. They are all working in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's kamal. Ala lahu. Is it not for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Al khalqu creation. Wal amru the command. Is it not for him? Tabarak Allahu Rabbul Alameen. Is it not for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, al khalqu the creating? And then wal amru the command. Tabarak Allahu Rabbul Alameen. Exalted is he, Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe. It's powerful this verse where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he says Ala lahu is it not for him subhanahu wa ta'ala Al khalqu the creating Wal amru Are you with me? Wal amru the command This is the verse and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah used that the Quran is not created He said Ala lahu al khalqu Isn't the creation for him and the command Are you there? The Quran is command so if you say it's khalq, Allah Ta'ala wa ta'ala divided between the two. Al-alahu al khalqu isn't creation for him. Wal amru isn't a command for him. Wal waw taqtadi fi asli lughati al mughayara. And that waw in the original essence of the language it shows two different things. Rahimahullah. And also another thing that it shows us, wallahi, wallahi shows us another thing, which is al-alahu al khalqu wal amru. Isn't creating for him. And isn't it commanding for him in a sense where isn't the one who created you, who brought you into existence, who provides all of this for you, makes everything happen for you? Are you with me? Does he not have the rights to command? In other words, this shows you the strong bond between your essence and the Sharia and how they work hand in hand. And that there is nothing that can bring your masalih and your mafasid. There's nothing that can bring you good. And there's nothing that can repel evil from you. There's nothing that can repel evil from you. Huh? Better than the commands of Allah. Wa he knows what's good for you. He knows what's harmful for you. He knows what's going to benefit you. He knows what's not going to benefit you. So the command, it should be for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, what we can take from this ayah is Ala lahu al khalqu. Pay attention. Is the ahkam al kuniya. Wal amru the ahkam al shar'iya. For him is the universal science. And for him is the jurisprudent, the ahkam shar'iya. That he can command you, he can tell you to do something, he can tell you to stay away from something. He has the rights. You're a slave. You listen. You listen to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala, is it not for him? Al Khalku Wal Amru Tabarak Allahu Exalted is He Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Rabbul Alameen The Lord of the The Universe Subhanahu wa Ta'ala And this word Tabaraka in this form no one else can use it other than Allah because the word Ta'adama Great and high is He Tabaraka is a person whose khair is excessive His khair and he's good. Is that what that's what it is? Naam. Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah he carried on saying after he brought the verse, he says, And Al Rabbu is the one who is Al Ma'bud. Mama Al Ma'bud. It means al mustahiq the one who deserves لأن يعبد for him to be worshipped دون سواه the one who deserves to be worshipped besides everything else. And the author doesn't mean as some people may think that what he's trying to say is that من معاني الرب from the meanings of the word الرب is that المعبود no he's not trying to say that the word رب Many things fall under it. Al-Raziq is one of the meanings of Rabb. Al-Malik is one of the meanings of Rabb. Al-Mudabbir is one of the meanings of Rabb. Al-Sayyid is one of the meanings of Rabb. Sah? But Al-Ma'bud is not one of the meanings of Rabb. Okay? So 
So that's something we have to understand. And the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, later is going to bring the kalam of Ibn Kathir, and that's going to explain it to us. Okay? So when he said, وَالرَّبُّ هُوَ الْمَعْبُودُ He's actually taking it from the ayah that he's going to use as an evidence. وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى My evidence for this. Evidence for what? You have to understand. When the author says, my evidence for this is, you have to ask, you have to ask yourself and wonder, what is it that he's going to use the evidence for? On what base? And you always have to realize the relationship between the dalil and the mustadil. Huh? The dalil, the evidence, and the thing that the evidence is being used for. Now, so the Shaykh Rahimullah is using the evidence for here, and the dalil is that that the Rabb is the one who deserves to be worshipped. He's the one who deserves to worship, be worshipped. So look, let's ponder, let's let's analyze this before we explain the verse. Is Allah a Rabb? Naam. He's the Rabb. He's the one who created you. He's the one who sustains you. He's the one who provides for you. He's the one who runs your affairs. He's the one you rely on. He's the one who gave you life. He's the one who gave gives you death. All of that is a Rabb. The one who does all of that for you. Is he not the one who deserves to be worshipped alone? If you've acknowledged that he's the one who does all of that for you, he does deserve to be worshipped alone. It doesn't make sense after that for you to worship anything other than him. Are you with me, brothers? And then he brings an ayah in the Quran, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He says, What dalil qawlu ta'ala? The evidence for this is that Ya ayyuhan nasu, Ya ayyuhan nasu abudu rabbakum ulladhi khalaqakum waladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. This ayah, if you look at it, Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nas. This is a nida. It's an addressing. Allah is addressing. And he's addressing an nas, the people. Allah is addressing the people. He's not addressing the believers. He's not addressing the disbelievers. Rather, he's addressing everybody. Humans. And an nasu, the people. Everyone. Each and every one of us. This is so when you say an nas. It what it encompasses Jamiul Khalqi, all of the creation. Mu'minuhum wa kafiruhum, the believers from amongst them and the disbelievers from amongst them. What is it that they're being commanded? U'budu Rabbakum. Worship your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship him. Obey him subhanahu wa ta'ala in faith. Alone. Follow everything he commands you. Stay away from everything he prohibits you from, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what way, like in how do you do all of that? Do all of that with complete love and complete humiliation. That's what he means. Ya ayyuha nasu taqu. Ya ayyuha nasu ubudu. Rabbakum, your Lord, alladhi the one. Khalaqakum, he created you. Ma ma'ana khalaqakum, ay awjadakum. He brought you into existence from min al adami when you didn't exist. And the way he did it is a bitaqdeer in azim in wasul in badi'. He did it in a magnificent manner. Magnificent. Amazing manner, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he didn't just bring you into this world, subhanallah. Rather, he nurtured you, cultivated you. He allowed you to grow this much. Gave you everything which you have. Sahih? Allah wa ta'ala is the one who He gave you all that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a story I want to, inshallah ta'ala, mention, which is to show you how Allah wa ta'ala, the things that he's done for you. And then you find, subhanallah, after have done all of that, you go against the meaning of, u'budu rabbakum. Al-Fudayl ibn al-Rabi'ah, he says, kuntu waqifan, one day I was standing, bayna yaday al-Rashid, Harun al-Rashid, the leader of the Muslims, I was standing in front of him. Iddakala alayhi ibn al-Sammak, ibn al-Sammak, Entered onto Harun al Rashid. Ibn Samak was a wa'ad, a, remind, a person who used to give wa'ad, reminders and whatnot. And whilst Ibn Samak was there, Al Fadl ibn Rabi' was standing there, he said, Harun al Rashid called for a water to be brought to him. He asked if a water can be brought for him, Liya Sharabahu, so he can drink from it. فَأُوْتِيَ بِهِ The water was brought to him. فَلَمَّا رَفَعَهُ When Harun al-Rashid 
he lifted the water cup up. ليشربهو, so he can drink from the water. Ibn Sammak said to Harun al-Rashid, Ala rislika ya amir al muminin Slow down, the leader of the believers. Slow down, slow down for a little bit. Biqarabatika min rasulillahi I swear you by Allah, he's saying. And don't lie to me, to Harun al-Rashid. By you being related to the Prophet's family. If you were prohibited. This drink that you have in your, this glass of cup that you have in your hand. If you were prevented from it. What would you give out to get that cup? And you're, and you're thirsty. Now you ask for it. You're very thirsty, right? This thirst, this water you're thirsty for, if somebody stopped you from it and you were prevented from it, how much would you pay to get it? He said, mulki, half of my kingdom. Then Ibn Samak said to him, Ishrab hannak Allah. Drink. May Allah wa ta'ala quench your thirst. فَلَمَّا شَرِبَ وَنْ هَارُونَ الرَّشِيدِ drank it. He then looked at him again. And he said, بِقَرَابَتِكَ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَمَ By Allah, I swear you by Allah. You're related to the Prophet's family. لَوْ مُنِعْتَ If you were prevented, خُرُوجُهَا مِنْ بَدَنِكَ That this water will not come out from you. It got stopped. It got trapped inside you. Meaning, you can't urinate it out. بِمَا كُنْتَ تَشْتَرِي How much would you pay to just get this water out of yourself? قَالَ بِنِصْفِ مُلْكِ He said, half of my kingdom. Ibn Sammak said, وَمُلْكٌ Kingdom قِيمَتُهُ Its value is شُرْبَةُ مَاءٍ Just a cup of water. A kingdom that its worth is only a cup of water. Half you would pay to drink it, and half, the other half you would pay to to let it out. So it's only worth a cup of water. Then it is befitting for a smart person not to run for this and not to put his life into this. فَبَكَرَ الرَّشِيدُ هَارُونَ الرَّشِيدُ cried. وَاشْتَدَّ بُكَاؤُهُ And his crying became excessive. Al Imam Khatib al Baghdadi brings it in his Kitab Tariq al Baghdad. Al Rafi'u brings it in his Tadween fi Akbar al Ghazwin. Suyuti brings it in his Tariq al Khulafa. Ibn Kathir brings it in his Kitab al Bidai wa Nihaya. Al Imam al Tabari, Ibn Jarir al Tabari, he brings it in his Tariq. Abu Hamid al Ghazali brings it in, in his book Al Ihya Ulum al Din. Al Imam al Dahabi brings it in Tariq al Islam. Al Imam ibn Hazm brings it in his Kitab al Akhlaq wa Siyar. Al Akhlaq wa Siyar wa Siyar. أما والسير So that is what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala blessed you with He created you brought you into existence provided everything for you runs your affairs you receive things that if you looked at the value of it you would truly not even be able to what you would do anything to get it. But Allah has given it to you for free, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He hasn't charged you for it. He didn't just create you, but He created those who came before you. So you can gain taqwa from this. Okay? So you can gain taqwa from this. Brothers, wallahi, this is a fa'idatun latifa. This is a latifa. This is something very, very beneficial. And I want you to take this on because it's very important. And that is, my beloved brothers and sisters, the reason why Allah brought you into this universe is to what? La. It's to worship Him. Ibadah. And the reason why Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has placed Ibadah over you and wants from you to gain through Ibadah is what? At taqwa. You see? So the ultimate goal from your creation is ibadah. And the taqwa is the ultimate 
goal from ibadah. That's why it's mentioned in this ayah, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ الَّذِي the one خَلَقَ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ The one who has made for you الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا أي بِسَاطًا He has made this earth for you, for me, for you, flattened it out for you, spread it out for you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did it. And you benefit from it. How do you benefit from it? You you build, you 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 farm, you place agriculture on it, you do agriculture, you see. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He placed over you the sama, and then through that comes what the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. وَأَنْزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ and then from the sama, Allah sent down from what ma and water. The sama in this ayah وَأَنْزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاء. Pay attention; it doesn't mean the sama; it means the sahab. وَأَنْزَلَ مِنَ السَّحَابِ because the rain doesn't come from the sama; it comes from the Sahab, it comes from the clouds. And this is what the Mufassirun, uh, they mention. And the Arabs, pay attention, they use sama for anything that's above. Does that make sense? The Arabs, they say, وَكُلُّ مَا عَلَى وَارْتَفَعَ فَهُوَ السَّمَاء Anything that's above, they consider as sama. So that's why they use, that's why Allah uses it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the word sama. And the water is the best. Pay attention. What's the best form of sadaqah that a person does? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi said the best sadaqah a person can give is water. You know why? Why is the water the best sadaqah to ever give? Because Allah wa ta'ala created the humans from water and fluid, and that's the most important thing for the human. As Allah said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ Allah says we have placed and we have made out of every living thing water. Also Allah says in Surah Al-Mu'minun وَأَنزَلَ وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً بِقَدَرٍ فَأَسْكَنَّاهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِنَّا عَلَى ذَهَابٍ بِهِ لَقَادِرُونَ وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ And Allah تبارك wa ta'ala He brought out from the rain that came down it brings and it produces from the earth with the permission of who? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Min thamarati it brings the word thamarat is plural of the word thamara. And it is all the the seeds and the fruits and the vegetables that come out of the earth. Allah is the one who does all of that. Fala taja'alu lillahi andadan. Do not make for Allah and dad ashbahan one wa and dad, don't make for Allah Taala things that you you equal to Him Subhanahu wa Taala and that you make equivalent to Him. Don't. Why antum taalamun? Whilst you know, whilst you know that all of these things that you're worshiping can't do all of that Allah can do. ما معنى وأنتم تعلمون أي تعلمون أن هذه الأنداد ليست مماثلة لله تعالى Whilst you know that these andad these things that you're worshipping besides Allah they are not equal to him they are not the ones who can send rain from the sky they are not the ones جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم they don't do all of that so because they can't do all of that why are you worshipping besides Allah? And you know, you, you know this idol that you're worshipping. You know this dead in the grave that you're begging. You know, and you're aware he can't do all of that. So why are you asking for, for it? And this ayah, subhanAllah, from the ayat of the Quran, there are many. What has it combined between? Al-amru bi'ibadatillahi wahda. It commands you to worship Allah alone. And it also tells you, tells you, and also tells you to what? والنهي عن عبادة ما سواه and it also prohibits you from worshipping anything besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى
Abdullah ibn Abbas says something very powerful. I have to bring it to your attentions. And this is something that Ibn Abi Hatim brings in his tafsir. Sheikh Abdi, Sheikh Sulaiman ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, the author of the kitab Taysir al Aziz al Hamid. He brings it as well, inshallah ta'ala. And the Senate, inshallah ta'ala, is Jayyid, as he classified it also as Sheikh Sulaiman. Rahimahullah, Ala Sheikh. Is that Abdullah ibn Abbas said, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Al-Andad huwa shirku Do not make associates with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And then Ibn Abbas says, أَخْفَى مِنْ دَبِيبِ النَّمْلَةِ عَلَى صَفَاتٍ سَوْدَاءٍ فِي لَيْلَةِ الظَّلْمَاءِ And he mentions that this shirk, are you with me, is, is hidden than a ant, a black ant, in a pitch dark black night under a, under a uh, rock. That's how hard and very, it can be hidden. And he said, from those things is, that the person says, Wallahi wa hayatika. Allah and your life. You see? Wa hayat, I swear by my life. I swear by your mom's life. You see? I swear by your mom. All of that. See? Wa yaqul, and also to say, Lawla, if it wasn't for the dogs, la al If it wasn't for this dog, Wallahi, all the thieves, all the thieves would come to our house. How many times do we say things like that? If it wasn't for this, it wouldn't have happened. And we divert the strength and the power from who? Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Ibn Abbas, he says, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ And this is what is meant by it. It's actually statements that the people say that you find that that's what it refers to. Ibn Abbas goes on saying, وَقَوْلُ الرَّجُلِ And the statement of a person, لَوْلَ اللَّهِ If it wasn't for Allah. وَفُلَانِ And if it wasn't for so-so. What should he have said? Lawla Allah, thumma fulan, right? Because thumma shows tartib and it means Allah first, then the slave. But this person is saying, Lawla Allah, if it wasn't Allah and so and so. You're meant to say, if it wasn't for Allah, then if it wasn't for you. So this is what is meant by it. Then the author, Rahimahullah, before I go to the statement of uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Had, there's something I have to mention here. This verse that I just read right now, this verse that I just recited and I read, which is Qawluhu Ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalakakum waladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم وأنتم تعلمون. This ayah it uses and it's in it this ayah has in it. Rational evidences that Allah wa Taala uses to nullify in taking associates besides Allah wa Taala. Generally, if you look at the Quran, the Quran uses two methods. Two methods to what? To rationally destroy and nullify associate partners with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The first argument it uses is that it says to them, if you guys affirm that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is your creator, Allah is your sustainer, Allah is the one who gives you life, Allah is the one who kills you. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala who is the, the one who runs your affairs and runs the affairs of this universe and he's the one who governs us then by necessity you have to 
acknowledge that he's alone and he's one. And now that you've affirmed he's the only one because it's impossible for many people to run all of this. There has to be one person who does it. Sahih? So now that you've affirmed he's one, then anyone whose characteristics is to do all of this for the universe and he's the one who runs all of this and he's the one who created all of this. If he's alone on this, then he truly deserves to be worshipped alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything other than him is a slave of his and a creation of his. And that they can't benefit you nor can they harm you. And the evidence for that is in Surah to Yunus, Ayah 31. Allah says, قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ So here Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He's trying to show the contradiction in their statement. You're saying Allah is the only creator, the only sustainer, the only provider, the one who gives life, the one who gives death, the one who runs the universe. If you guys are affirming all of that, isn't that contradicting? That you're not worshipping him alone? Isn't that contradicting? That's the first way that rationally the Quran proves them to be wrong. The second method that the Quran follows is that to rationally prove is that and هذه الآلهة المعبودة these things that are worshipped besides Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Are you there? These things that are worshipped besides Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That the people are taking as ilah. They don't have any characteristics to prove that they are ilah. They have not qualified to become ilah. Have they proven themselves to be ilah? Have they created? Have they sustained? Have they provided for anyone? Huh? Allah says that in Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 3. He says, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَةً لَا يَخْلُقُونَ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ مَوْتًا وَلَا حَيَاتًا وَلَا نُشُورًا If you tell that thing you're begging and you're worshipping, stop yourself from dying. Don't die. Live as long as you want. And he tells you, I can't do that. That shows you that he has no tedbir. He's not a mudabbir. So he's not qualified to be an ilah. An ilah is one mudabbir. Yaf'alu ma yasha. He can do whatever he wishes. So if that's now something that you can rationally agree to, then how is it that you're worshipping him? Or how is it that you're worshipping it? This verse that we've just read, Ya Ya Nasu Abudu Rabbakum Ladi Khalaqakum na it follows it follows the first of the two. The first of the two methods in which the Quran follows to rationally prove that associating partners with Allah is rationally incorrect. Then the author Rahimahullah brings a statement of Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah who says الخالق لهذه الأشياء هو المستحق للعبادة. ابن كثير هو إذا by the way he's ابن كثير is العلامة الحافظ المحدث المفسر المؤرخ ابن كثير was a man of great knowledge العلامة means a person whose knowledge is excessive الحافظ is a person who has reached a high amount of knowledge in the science of hadith and memorization of the Prophet's statements and the Prophet's actions, the prophetic tradition. Ibn Kathir has memorized a lot. He's a muhadith, he's a mufassir, he has a tafsir book. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, has a what? A tafsir book. He's also a mu'arikh, he has a book written history, he wrote history, he's a historian, he's a mu'arikh. He's got the book Al Bidayah wa Nihayah. His name is Ismail ibn Umar ibn Kathir. His kunya is Abu al-Fida. And he was born 700 Hijriya. Or a little bit after it. And he was born in Dimashqa. 
and he grew up as an orphan. His father died. And Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, ruzika hafidha nadira. His memorization and his ability to memorize was something very unique. It wasn't seen in many people. It was very distinct and unique. Rahimahullah. The Shaykh, rahimahullah, Ibn Kathir, ishtagala bil hadith wa daras al fiqh. Ibn Kathir busied himself, preoccupied his time with hadith. He taught fiqh. And he also authored in it. وَأَخَذَ عَنْ شَيْخِ الْإِسْلَامِ ibn تَيْمِيَةِ And he took knowledge from Ibn Taymiyyah, رحمه الله. وَأَحَبَّهُ And he showed love to Ibn Taymiyyah. Oh, he showed him a lot of love. وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ And he even praised Ibn Taymiyyah, رحمه الله. Go to the kitab, Al-Bidai wa Nihaya, 14th volume, page 135. You'll see the praise and the things that he said about Ibn Taymiyyah, رحمه الله. From the books that he's written that are out there, that are published, that we've seen, is his tafsir, very well known. Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim is called. Also his book al Bidai wa Nihaya, the beginning to the end. That is Tariq history, magnificent book. He also has a book called Jami' al-Masanid wa Sunan. He also has Irshad al-Faqih ila ma'rifati adillati tanbih. The kitab written uh, by Shaka Shirazi's kitab al tanbih he came and he placed evidences for him to provide evidences for his because he was a Shafi'i and Abu Shaqa Shirazi was a Shafi'i. From the books he has written that we don't see, that we've lost, is he has an explanation of Sahih al Bukhari. Ibn Kathir had actually an explanation of Sahih al Bukhari, but it is not seen, it's not been seen yet. And I ask Allah that we find it and we do publish it, inshallah ta'ala, in this world that we live and we see it. But it's not seen. Okay? And we're not going to say that it's lost or it's never going to get... Because there are some books that got lost. But alhamdulillah, later in life, we found them, thinking we're never going to find them. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is one who can make it happen. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah died the year 774. 774. So Ibn Kathir rahimahullah said, الخالق لهذه الأشياء the one who created all of this that we see هو المستحق is the one who deserves للعبادة so now we understand what the author meant when he said when the author رحمه الله said الرب هو المعبود now we know what he meant by it he's taking it from the statement of who ابن كثير رحمه الله which is الخالق لهذه الأشياء the one who created all of this هو المستحق للعبادة is the one who deserves to be worshipped. Is the one who deserves to be worshipped. And now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop there, because the author now goes into the types of ibadah there is, and we're going to touch on that, inshallah ta'ala, next, next lesson. Anything which I have said that was wrong, incorrect, slip, slip of a tongue, then it's from me, Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.